Hi skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. Uh, we're here to do a comparison of 2019 men's freeride skis. Um, but before we jump into that, um, check out the hat that I'm wearing. Um, we're, we're producing some Ski Essentials uh, attire. So we started with this hat. We're going to do some other hats. You're going to see some t-shirts as well. Um, we're kind of excited. We've never really had Ski Essentials branded clothing before. Um, and eventually that stuff will be available for purchase on SkiEssentials.com. So if you're a, a big Ski Essentials fan and you want to rock our logo, um, soon you'll be able to, which is really exciting for us um, as a staff and, and to provide to our, our customers. Um, I'll also add that we're doing a lot of, um, a lot of giveaways this season. Um, so follow us on Instagram, um, Ski Essentials. Um, definitely follow us on Facebook, too, if you don't. Most of the giveaways will be done on Instagram, um, but we're about to kick off our 20, let's call it 2019 Ski Happy Photo Contest, which will be the fifth annual Ski Happy Contest. Um, and there'll be information about that kind of all over the place. So follow us on Instagram, follow us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. Um, all those places are great. Um, so that said, let's, let's dive right into this. We've got 15 skis here once again. Um, a variety of manufacturers and a variety of, of performance too. Um, I think this is kind of one of the one of the more interesting comparison videos and articles because we really get a big range of performance when you something I've talked about before it, it feels like as you increase in width you also get a, a bigger range of performance. Um, so let's start over here on this side um, and you'll probably notice that today I have these skis organized in just alphabetical order, um, which I thought was a, a interesting way to kind of change it up. Um, we, we've done kind of a, a different, different sequence of skis each time um, in terms of how I organize them. So today is just alphabetic. Um, so this is the Armada ARV 106. Um, kind of a cool ski to, to start with um, and really a, a pretty traditional Armada ski in terms of intended performance, intended use, and overall feel. Um, this is basically just a wood core, but it, it's a little bit more advanced than that. There's two different densities of wood. Um, so a light wood with then some longitudinal stringers of a denser wood. Um, so it kind of, it increases stiffness a little bit, um, responsiveness a little bit, but overall it's still a relatively soft ski. Um, and it, it's very obviously a twin tip. Um, so some Clearly some freestyle influence in this ski, some free ride influence, um, and, and that, that shows in its performance. Um, it's pretty playful. It loves to kind of jump and, and smear and, and butter. Uh, maybe you're the type of guy that, that plans on taking a ski into the terrain park a little bit. Um, even by a traditional, even though by a traditional measure 106 underfoot is pretty wide for kind of a terrain park or freestyle ski. Um, these days there's a lot of people, a lot of people that, that go into the park on something this wide. Um, so good float and powder at 106 underfoot. There's tip and tail rocker so it's pretty maneuverable. Um, it's not super light so you get some stability and some heft which is kind of nice. Um, and then super playful when you want it to be definitely a ski that, that you can take into the terrain park. Um, you could ski it backwards really easily and then it, it'd be a fun ski for if that sounds like you as a skier, um, definitely a great choice. Moving along, uh, we're going to stick with Armada here. This is the Tracer 108. Um, so something I mentioned in the written portion, you could still probably call this a twin tip, although it's starting to feel like less of a real twin tip. Um, and to me that's because it's more of a directional ski. So the mount point is much less centered. You know, you got a lot more ski in front of you than behind you. Of course, you can always play around with mount point, but intended mount point on this ski is, is further back. You get longer, longer rocker in the tip, um, a little bit more early taper too. It's not like super pronounced early taper, which we'll see in some other skis down the road here, um, but it is there. Some round off um, taper in the tail. Again, not like ultra pronounced taper. Um, and then this uses a really lightweight core, and then they strengthen it with Enagra mesh. Um, there's actually a sheet of metal underfoot too, mostly for binding retention, but it also kind of stables the ski a little bit underfoot. 
Um, so not a stiff ski. Um, we're definitely going to see some stiffer skis as we as we go along here. Um, and there is Armada has an Invictus line, which, which kind of is similar shape but uses metal. Um, so the Tracer kind of sits in this playful, uh, maneuverable category um, for a more directional skier than, than the ARV. Um, it also feels a little lighter than the ARV. You could definitely use this as an Alpine Touring ski. Um, I think a lot of people will. So, uh, if you're un unfamiliar, Armada is under the same um, umbrella parent company as Solomon and Atomic. So this would be a great ski for the shift and, and pretty obviously one that they are kind of considering when developing the shift. Um, but whether you use it as a Alpine touring ski or a, more of a dedicated resort ski, um, it's very quick, it's very responsive. It's still, you can ski it fast and aggressively. It doesn't have upper echelon levels of vibration damping and stability, um, but it's also, it's not a noodle. Um, it's, it's not gonna feel particularly unstable, um, but to me it's highlighting performance is, is maneuverability and quickness. Um, so really cool to see kind of two different skis from Armada right off the bat. <clears throat> uh, the next ski is the Atomic Backland 107. Um, and this ski is easily one of the lightest skis on the wall, um, if not the lightest. In fact, I believe it is the lightest. Um, but really cool ski here. Um, lightweight wood core and there's carbon fiber in this ski as well. So kind of along the same lines, although it's slightly different feel, this is going to be very responsive. Um, so maybe you're the skier that likes that. Maybe you prefer a heavier, damper ski that doesn't feel as quick. Um, doesn't feel like it's reacting to skier input or snow conditions immediately. Um, but if you do like that performance, this is a fantastic ski. Um, definitely some soft snow focus. Atomic uses Horizon Tech. So I always describe it like a boat hull, um, but it's kind of like side rocker uh, on the tip. And if you can imagine what a displacement boat hull does, it's basically doing the same thing in the tip. So it's moving material away from the ski in this case snow, not water. Um, but what that does is it really improves flotation. Um, this is a really, and, and the, I want to highlight the tail shape too. It, it, it's almost like a pintail, um, and that also helps with maneuverability. So if you're skiing deep snow and, and you're not at high speeds and, and maybe the ski is planing in the front, but you're kind of sinking into the snow a little bit in the back, which is certainly not a bad thing. That's kind of what we're looking for. Um, if you're in a situation like that, it's pretty easy to release the tail edge, get the ski to maneuver. Um, definitely another one, again, um, same parent company here between Armada and Atomic. So definitely another ski that was, that was intended for a shift binding. Um, but even if you're just putting a, an Alpine binding on it, um, if you value lightweight skis, maneuverability, um, and, and definitely soft snow performance, this is a great choice. Next up is the Blizzard Rustler 11. Um, even though I did mention that the Tracer uses a little bit of metal, um, this is really the first ski that, that uses metal as a contributing factor to performance. Um, so we've talked about these Rustler skis quite a bit. Um, you've probably seen our reviews of the 10 and the 9. Um, same concept here, but the metal is shorter. Um, so we actually, when we did one of the Rustler reviews, we kind of compared all three. The 11 is the shortest metal and the longest rocker. Um, so this is also, I, I want to mention, one of the widest skis in this comparison. It ranges um, as you go up in width, I think 116 on, on, this, uh, on this biggest ski here. Um, so the widest ski in this comparison, um, arguably the most kind of powder, focused, um, but all of these skis realistically are going to do great in powder. Um, but what you get out of the Wrestler 11 is you get a nice stable feel underfoot, um, but then the tips and tails are, are much softer. Um, I know I did this on the Wrestler 9 and the Wrestler 10 too, but you can feel it. Um, so you get a little bit of playfulness out of the tips and tails, but then that stability underfoot when you need it. Um, so. Kind of can be two different things for two different skiers or, or really 
a variety of different things depending on your skiing style. Some, um, you know, for me, I'm, I'm pretty lightweight. This would be really plenty stable for me to ski hard and fast on. Um, even some of Blizzard's kind of lighter weight big mountain athletes choose the Wrestler 11 over the Cochise, which uses more metal. Um, but yeah, it's, it's cool because you get that stability of the metal, but then a little bit more playfulness, a little bit more maneuverability, and, and some nice float out of the tips and tails. Um, so definitely a valuable addition to the Blizzard line, and, and the Wrestler line in general has emerged as, as a very popular, popular ski collection. So next we have the DPS Whaler 112, um, another fairly unique ski in this comparison. Um, if you remember a few skis back, I was talking about early taper, really pronounced, <coughs> excuse me, really pronounced early taper. Um, this is one of those skis that, that has it. In the written, written portion of the article, I, I mentioned that in my opinion, you, you could arguably call this five point side cut. Um, but DPS doesn't, they only list three dimensions, they don't list five dimensions. Um, I feel like you see less companies listing five dimensions in, in 2019 than you did a handful of years ago when this shape started kind of first coming out. Um, but this is the Alchemist construction version of the Whaler 112. Uh, Alchemist construction relies on carbon fiber more than anything else and it's aerospace grade carbon fiber. Um, so some, some really cool stuff in terms of its ability to um, stay stable, absorb vibrations, and still have those performance benefits of carbon, the energy, the responsiveness. Um, and it all comes in in a pretty lightweight package. So definitely another ski that could be justified as an alpine touring ski. Um, it's not like a skin clip attachment, but there is a flat part on the, on the tail there that would be perfect for, for putting a skin on. Um, and performance wise, this is really going to be best for somebody who prefers maneuverability, um, really values pivoting turns, the ability to release your tail edge, um, similar to some of the skis that we looked at so far, but even more pronounced because of this drastic early taper or, or pronounced early taper, um, and, and also pretty substantial rocker in the Whaler 112 too. So that all adds up to a ski that has exceptional float. You got this big fat section of the tip right here that's really gonna keep you up on top of the snow. Um, but then it also has a very maneuverable, pivoting, playful, forgiving feel. Um, comes with a hefty price tag, but that's what you get when you want aerospace grade carbon fiber in your skis. And now the Fisher Ranger 108 Ti. Um, this ski is in my opinion, a little bit different than what we've talked about so far. You could, you could argue that it has a more even mix of performance characteristics, and I think I would be one that argued that compared to the, the initial skis we've looked at. So maybe you live out west and, and you just want one ski, but you still want a wide, soft snow-oriented ski. Uh, the Ranger 108 Ti could definitely be up there. Um, their AirTech Ti core and the carbon nose Carbon nose is really cool. It's just really, really thin, which helps reduce swing weight. It's not a drastically lightweight ski. Like if we were to compare it to the Backland 107, the 107 is, is a, lot, a lot lighter, um, but it's not exceptionally heavy either. So say at the other end of the spectrum, if we compare it to the Confession, it's definitely lighter than a ski like that. Um, Fisher does put a skin attachment point on the tail on the Ranger 108. So they are kind of encouraging you to use it as a touring ski, or at least consider using it as a touring ski. Um, and I'll add that if you're using this as a touring ski, you really should be a pretty advanced, you know, maybe even full expert level skier, um, because along with this metal comes with the extra weight, but also comes with more power, more vibration damping, and all that stuff that we get out of a ski with metal. Um, really smooth performance out of the Ranger. Um, I think the tip shape also really helps with that. Pretty long rocker, pretty smooth, not necessarily early taper, but kind of a blunt nose shape, um, which really gives it kind of a predictable feel in soft snow. Nice shape to the tail too. You can see that, that skin attachment point, but before that, it's kind of similar smooth early taper that's, that's corresponding with, with rocker. 
Um, so good stability out of this ski, good vibration damping, um, but because it's got that tip shape, got that tail shape, and the swing weight is relatively low, um, you know, lighter swing weight than overall weight, if that makes sense, um, it's, it's still a fairly maneuverable ski. So continuing to move along, uh, we have the Head Core 105. Um, there's a little bit of a theme here in these next couple skis because I think the Core 105 is another one that, that has a relatively even mix of performance characteristics. Um, so a pretty interesting ski overall here. Um, we've talked about the Core collection a lot. Head uses a really interesting combination of materials in this ski. Uh, it's Karuba wood core and then graphene and choroid, um, and there's some carbon in it as well. Um, so not a traditional construction really by any means, um, but the result is a ski that's pretty stiff. Um, we, we've talked about this before, with, especially with the 99. The 99 is very stiff, but the 105 actually is too. Um, so kind of unique. It's not as heavy as say if you were using traditional metals like like denser wood and, and metal or, or more traditional materials rather like denser wood and metal um, to achieve this same level of performance the ski would be heavier um, that said the core 105 is is not the lightest ski on the wall again to go back to the backland 107 it's definitely heavier than the than the backland um, not the heaviest um, but but not the lightest either um, but again, you get kind of a little bit different than everything we've looked at so far and, and something that will carry through this whole comparison is, is the rocker and early taper that manufacturers put into these skis, it varies with, with pretty much everything on this wall. There, there's nothing that's like really just like something else on this wall. Um, so a fair amount of early taper, but not as pronounced as we've seen with some other skis. Um, rocker camber rocker, which is, is pretty much a theme through most all of these skis, although we will see some exceptions to that. Um, but Core 105 is great if you, you don't want a soft flexing ski, but you also don't want a heavy ski. Um, that's kind of where it comes into play. Excellent edge grip. Um, definitely another ski that you could justify as a, a one ski quiver if, if you lived out west. Um, Eastern skiers, it's probably a little bit wide unless you really kind of prefer being on a wider platform um, and aren't really worried about losing some edge to edge quickness. Um, but excellent torsional stiffness out of this ski. You don't get quite the same level of vibration damping as metal, um, but it's still really stable. Um, definitely another one that you could put a touring binding on um, would be a really fun kind of Really any terrain, it would feel appropriate as a touring ski. So even if there wasn't like real deep soft snow, you could definitely still stay, take the core and, and have a lot of fun. Um, I think this, this line in general, the core collection is starting to gain more followers after, after it's been out for a few seasons and people have been able to get on it and, and do testing of their own. Um, but a really fun ski. Uh, and I'll, I'll just remind you once more that it is relatively stiff, even though it achieves a, a fairly lightweight. Uh, next up is the K2 Pinnacle 105 Ti. So same waist width as the Core 105 and another one that kind of is a, among this comparison and, and this category at least, it's a pretty versatile ski. Um, so. This is another thing that we've talked about a lot, but K2 uses conic technology. Um, and, and the main idea behind that is in the center of the ski, there are lighter, lighter materials. And then along the edges, there are denser materials. So the idea is to achieve a relatively light overall weight. I would say fairly similar to the core. Feels a little heavier in my hands, but not drastically heavier. Um, so not super, super heavy. Um, and then you get the performance benefits of metal and some denser materials along the edges. So let's talk about two different kind of applications for a ski like this. Say you're out on a day and there hasn't been much fresh snow recently and, and you really just want to rip turns on, on firm snow. This will actually do it really well, even though there's pretty long rocker. Uh, when you tip the ski on edge, you get really good edge contact. Not quite tip to tail edge contact, but pretty darn close. 
Um, and that metal along the edges gives it good stability, good vibration damping, just good edge grip and a, a good feel. Um, and then on the other hand, if, if you're riding a flatter ski, because it's got that rocker, which if I had another one on this wall, I, I would compare it, but it's, all, it's really high rise rocker. Like when you put this on your car, um, you know, clip it into the ski rack, you notice that the tips and tails splay away from each other quite significantly. Um, same, as, same in the tail, tip, tips and tails. Um, it's when you're riding a flat ski, you can actually get, get it to pivot quite easily. Um, and because there's some early taper in the tips and tails as well, it's not going to feel catchy. Um, so definitely a really cool, versatile ski with, with almost two different personalities, whether you're charging and, and driving the edge or riding a flat ski and getting it to pivot. Um, not exceptionally stiff, um, but not soft either. Um, definitely softer than the core. Um, if we were to compare it to a Ranger 108, um, it's actually quite similar to the Ranger. Um, so both those skis I would kind of put in the category of, of not too soft, not too stiff. Um, really good vibration damping out of both those skis and quite versatile for something that's in the 105 to 108 millimeter waist width range. So we'll move right along to the other side of the sign here. Um, I, don't, I don't remember which ski it was, but one of these skis or a few of these skis I mentioned were, were quite unique. Um, I think the Marksman is arguably the most unique ski on this wall. Um, so before we get into what makes it unique, this is, I'll say relatively traditional construction. It's a wood core um, with, with triaxial fiberglass, but there's also carbon in this ski as well. Um, so it kind of boosts its, its longitudinal energy, gives it some nice pop. Um, and this is designed to be a very playful ski. You'll notice that it's asymmetrical side cut. So essentially this is your outside edge and this is your inside edge. And what that does, um, it's somewhat of a difficult concept to explain, but when you're in soft snow, you don't have as much to stand or, or press against as when you're on firm snow. So it actually kind of changes the effective turn radius of your uphill and downhill ski. If you've ever been skiing powder and felt like your downhill ski wanted to hook and cross over your uphill ski, um, you'll kind of understand what I mean. And by doing this and, and putting long early taper on the outside of the rockered portion of the ski and less on the inside portion of the ski, it actually changes the effective turn radius in deep snow. So you don't get much less of a preference or much less chance that your tips are going to cross. Um, definitely gives it a really playful, fun, fun feel. Um, very predictable in soft snow too. This is kind of Pep Fujas's ski, or at least he helped design this ski. Um, so if you, if you can kind of picture his skiing style, this is really what that's intended for. Um, and, and Pep kind of merged onto the scene as a terrain park guy. So he wanted this ski to have some ability in the terrain park too. And essentially if you remove the rockered portions of the ski, it's no longer asymmetrical side cut. So when you're on firm snow, say you're skiing this in the terrain park, you don't feel like, like the ski, uh, you, don't, you don't feel those, those, that asymmetrical bit in the tips and tails. Um, it, it's gonna perform just like a kind of normal ski um, when you're on firm snow. So kind of going back to something like the ARV 106, this is another one that if you're a terrain park skier or have been in the past, um, could be a really cool choice for you. Or if you just want a, a really kind of powder focused ski, something that has a unique shape that's, that's really focused on, on deep powder performance. Even though it's not the widest ski on this wall, it's one of the narrower ones. Uh, the Marksman's a great choice. So moving right along to the Liberty Origin 106. Um, Liberty traditionally has made a lot of twin tips, has used a lot of poplar, um, and that tradition kind of continues with the Origin 106, but it's a little different than, than some skis that they've made in the past. Um, so a little bit more directional than, than a real like freestyle focused twin tip in the sense that it has longer tip rocker than tail rocker. Um, there is a center mark on this ski, but I don't think too many people are going to be mounting it center, center. Um, basically, there, there's bamboo in this ski like they've 
the company has always done traditionally, but there's also poplar and there's carbon. Um, so historically, Liberty skis have been quite lightweight and pretty soft flexing. Um, this is not the stiffest ski on the wall, but it's not the softest either, and that carbon gives it a lot of energy. Um, something that I'll point out with this ski is that it really doesn't use early taper at all. Um, so I'm going to see another ski. Well, we'll see a couple more that kind of fall into a similar description in terms of early taper. Um, but some people really like that feel, some people don't. So what a lack of early taper does, the widest point of the ski is way up here at the tip. Um, so that actually gives it better flotation than some skis that use drastic early taper. So you have more surface area through your tip, so you're going to stay on top of the snow a little bit more and you have more to stand on, more to, more to kind of push against. Um, the downside to it is it's a little bit less maneuverable in terms of pivoting performance, but because this uses so much rocker, it kind of negates some of that. Um, and then what's, what's perhaps most impressive about this ski um, is how well it does on, on firmer snow conditions. So that's an area where traditionally Liberty hasn't been one of the leaders. Um, and there are some skis on this wall that are stiffer and more, more powerful and better vibration damping. Um, but this thing holds an edge really, really well. It's got that long edge contact because it doesn't have early taper. Um, so another ski that's, that's quite versatile, again, going back to kind of these three, if you were out west and just wanted one ski to do it all, um, this is a great choice because it'll carve turns on groomers, and it does so actually with a pretty responsive, energetic, relatively quick feel considering how wide it is. Um, and then you get that kind of fun... Fun powder performance, excellent float again because the tip is so wide and, and stays wide through the whole ski. Um, and then, yeah, that, that, that high, high amounts of rocker just really helps kind of boost, uh, boost maneuverability, uh, makes it a little bit more forgiving. Um, again, not quite as pivoting that type of maneuverability as some of the skis with, with tons of early taper, um, but just overall a really cool ski from Origin or from Liberty. And another one that could could be on the feet of kind of an ex-park skier. Uh, maybe you have some freestyle skiing in your background, but these days you don't really spend too much time in the terrain park. Um, but you still get a twin tip, so you can kind of do some, do some playful maneuvers on it. Um, definitely a really fun ski overall. So five more skis to go. Uh, I think we can get through it here if you're still with me. Um, next up is the Nordica Enforcer 110. Um, pretty cool ski from, from Nordica, definitely some inspiration from the Enforcer 100 if you're familiar with that, which I would venture a guess that you are because it's one of the more popular skis right now. Um, the Enforcer 110 basically takes that Enforcer 100, uses the same two sheets of metal, same turn radii, radii is a fun word, um, same turn radii through all the lengths. Um, but the metal, or sorry, the wood core actually is a little bit lighter. Um, so the flex pattern of the Enforcer 110 um, is a little bit softer than the Enforcer 100. Um, there's also much more tail rocker, um, arguably a twin tip shape in the Enforcer 110. Um, although I think most people would just consider that much more tail rocker and a more rounded off tail than, than the Enforcer 100. Um, but Two full sheets of metal in this ski, which sets it apart on this wall. Um, really pretty unique in the sense that it's a wood core sandwiched between two full sheets of metal. Um, that metal is pretty thin. It's 0.4 millimeters thick, um, which might sound like a whatever. I don't know what that means number, um, but in the grand scheme of things, that's pretty thin. Um, we see a lot of skis with 0.7 millimeter tightenal or, or, or at least thicker than 0.4. Um, so that also helps kind of soften up the flex of this ski, make it a little bit more forgiving. Um, and it, it's just, it's, it's got a, a nice mix of performance, this ski. Um, it, it has that stability and the vibration damping from two sheets of metal. Um, but it's also, like I was saying, it's not overly demanding. Um, it's actually pretty playful. Um, it's not the lightest ski on the wall, but the shape gives it a, a kind of playful 
definitely free ski, free ride influence to it. Um, this ski replaced the Patron a couple of years ago, um, which was also kind of known for, for playful performance and powder. Um, the metal in this ski definitely boosts that stability, gives it great vibration damping. Um, so kind of to, to go back, it, to me it has a very similar shape to the Origin 106, um, but you get a little bit of choice here whether you want uh, a slightly lighter feeling ski that's very energetic from, from specifically carbon um, to a ski that, that benefits from, from two sheets of metal. There actually is carbon in this as well. Um, but, but you really feel the metal more than anything else in the Enforcer 110 in the sense that it stays really damp, really quiet. Um, if, you're, if you're skiing it through choppy snow conditions, it, it performs really well. Um, and then it's also just really fun and powder. Um, see a lot of these on the hill. You're, you're starting to see more and more of them uh, this season. More, more this season than I think you did last season as often you see skis get more popular <clears throat> in their in their kind of second year. Um, so kind of interesting from, from Nordica, the Enforcer 110, it, it's emerged as quite a popular ski among this category. Next up is the Rosignol Soul 7. Um, this ski is quite similar, in my opinion, to the Whaler 112 that we looked at earlier. The plastic left some interesting residue behind that's wiping off immediately. Um, but yeah, the Soul 7 is, is a cool ski. It's definitely another one that kind of focuses on quickness and maneuverability over anything else. Um, this is like the fourth version of this ski, I think. There's been some changes to construction. There's been some changes to shape. Um, and I, I'm pretty sure this is the fourth version. Um, but basically, as they've changed it, they've gotten a little bit more stable. Um, the Soul 7's never been one that is specifically powerful or, or specifically stable at speed. Um, it, it's, it's highlighting performance is definitely its maneuverability, its ease of use and its forgiveness. Um, a great ski. So in the written portion of this article, I use Stowe as an example. Um, I think in, in kind of East Coast New England trees in general, um, a lot of people choose this as their powder ski because our terrain is so tight. Um, and, and there's a lot of skiers out there that value maneuverability over stability at speed. Um, so either you don't ski very fast or, or you're not particularly aggressive, um, this, this could be a great ski for you. Uh, and I, I think that's why you see so many of them on the hill. Um, you know, over the past, gosh, 10 years, um, you see a lot of Soul 7s out there. It's kind of notorious that you see a lot of black and yellow skis out there and those are pretty much all Soul 7s um, and I think that's because a wide range of skier types and skier abilities can ski this and really enjoy it. Um, so you could put an intermediate on it and they won't feel overpowered, it's not heavy, uh, it's got really catch-free performance in terms of pivoting and maneuvering the ski and then you can put an expert on it too and you know, they won't get that like blind ability to just charge through choppy snow like you do on some of these other skis. Um, but an expert who, again, values quickness and maneuverability and float, you get a lot of float out of the Soul 7, um, is really going to like this ski. So next up is the Solomon QST 106. Um, definitely kind of go back hit the rewind button a little bit. This is one that I consider fairly similar to say these three skis that we looked at before uh, and throw the Origin in there, maybe even throw the Enforcer 110 in there, although that's getting a little wider. Um, and I mean that in, in terms that this is a, a quite a versatile ski among this category. So 106 underfoot um, uses again rocker camber rocker. There's not a ton of early taper in this ski, which I think helps its performance on firm snow. Um, Solomon's CFX Superfiber is really cool. We've talked about it a lot. It's basically carbon and flax fibers woven together. So very energetic, but you get some damping properties out of the flax. Um, and there's also some metal in the ski as well. So really just, just versatile performance. This is another ski that I would describe as having a pretty even mix of performance characteristics. Um, and you get a, an energetic feel out of the carbon, but then you get the damping properties out of the metal and the flax. 
Um, I've always said that the QS skis in general, uh, they transition through different snow types, arguably better than any other ski or, or just really, really well. Um, whether you're, you know, say, if you're skiing the back country, um, you know, sometimes the conditions are perfect. Sometimes you're skiing like waist deep powder, but it's certainly not always that that case, sometimes you'll hit a wind buffed zone that's really kind of firm and, and choppy and chundery. Um, it, it's nice having edge grip. This is kind of a confidence inspiring ski in the backcountry, in the sense that it'll hold an edge. Um, you can make a, a sketchy traverse on firm snow over some cliff bands that you don't want to go off of and, and you won't be worried about that. Um, but it's also fairly light, um, pretty easy to throw around. Um, and, and pretty maneuverable and, and fairly forgiving. Um, to go back to the first few skis we looked at, definitely another one that I'm sure Solomon would, would love to see you mount a, a shift on. Um, and I think that's just a great way to think about this ski in general. Um, arguably more so than the Armadas or the Atomics, I think this ski really feels like it matches the performance of the shift um, and, and to kind of touch on the shift real quick the whole point is that it's a a tech touring binding that doesn't sacrifice downhill performance um, and i think that's a really good way to think about the qst 106 easily justifiable as an alpine touring ski but you're not really losing any any performance um, on the downhills so next up here this is the vocal 108 um, and this is another ski that, that's quite unique in this category. Um, this is a, the only ski on this wall that's full rocker or, or full reverse camber, whichever way you want to describe it. Um, so what that does is, let's, uh, let's take a step back real quick. This ski doesn't use much early taper at all. Um, it's pretty long turn radius, so you don't get quickness or maneuverability out of a short turn radius out or out of early taper. What you get it out of is, is that reverse camber shape. Um, so if you're just riding an edge on this ski, it's, it's going to make a pretty big turn, but it's really easy to release the tail edge because of that reverse camber shape. Um, a pretty surfy feel despite the fact that it's not a soft ski. Um, we see the same construction, or at least very, very similar construction in Vocal's RTM collection, which is more focused on torsional stiffness and firm snow performance than anything else. So you get a little bit of that same performance. Um, it does hold an edge really, really well on firm snow. There is good torsional stiffness, um, but you get, get a really unique feel in soft snow in, in terms of its ability to pivot and smear and then make a long turn because of that turn, that, that long turn radius. Um, definitely another great alpine touring ski option here. In fact, Vocal has a lot of skis that, that you could m mount a touring binding on. Um, they have their V-Works collection. Um, and this is actually kind of very similar to the V-Works collection. You see that the V-Works skis are, are up there in price a little bit higher than that. Um, so if you're kind of looking for that type of ski or that type of performance, but you don't want to spend quite that much, um, definitely consider the 108. Um, excellent option for a touring binding. Um, but you see a lot of people ski this as an alpine ski too. So to finish up, uh, we have the Vocal Confession. Um, and I thought this was kind of a cool ski to end on. It just happened this way because of the alphabetical order. Um, but it's really kind of a polar opposite to the ski that we started with. Um, so if the ARV 106 is focused on playfulness and, and like even a freestyle influence, um, this is a much more serious ski um, that's actually designed more for big mountain athletes than anything else. Um, so a really long turn radius in the confession. It uses a full length strip of metal called Titanal Band. Um, it's definitely one of the stiffer skis up here. Um, although, to be honest, the 108 is a little stiffer. It's just different in the feel. Um, the confession is going to give you a little bit better vibration damping at speed. Um, so 
you know, back when we were talking about the Rustler 11 and, and the fact that some of the big mountain athletes actually choose that ski. Um, most of vocals athletes or big mountain athletes, guys on the free ride world tour, stuff like that, most of them choose the Confession as their ski. Um, so you don't get a ton of rocker. There is enough rocker that you're going to get some nice float. It's not like high rise rocker. It's not ultra pronounced, um, but it is there. You really don't get any early taper because big mountain athletes really, really uh, value edge grip um, and value stability, value a ski's ability to track through choppy snow conditions. So if they're in a big mountain competition and they've chosen their line, and then a bunch of people go ahead of them and, and ski a similar line and it gets tracked out, those guys don't want their skis to be deflecting, um, and they're skiing so fast that if that did happen, it would be a fairly dangerous situation. Um, so this ski is really designed to stay stable at speeds through ungroomed off-piece terrain. And that wraps up our comparison of 2019 freeride skis. Um, as we always say with these comparisons, if there's a ski you don't see up here, um, Feel free to ask a question if you want us to compare any of these to something that we didn't include, or if you have more questions about certain models and how they compare to others, um, don't hesitate to leave us a comment on this video or on the article itself, and we'll get back to you with an answer as soon as we can. Um, luckily, we've been able to use this category of ski quite a bit already here at Stowe. Um, we're up to like 88 inches so far of annual snowfall, and we hit a a depth record um, on Mount Mansfield for the month of, of November. I think the snow stake was at 48 inches. Um, so we've already been out there on skis, kind of in this category, in this width range, um, and, and we'll definitely be, be skiing things in this category more as we get more snow. Um, pretty soon we're gonna start testing 2020 skis, uh, which is really exciting. That might sound kind of crazy, um, but we'll, we'll be getting on some at least in the next month or so, um, and, and we'll be releasing that information later in the month of January. Um, but kind of an exciting time of year. Um, we're getting to further test 2019 skis and, and getting some glimpses of, of 2020 skis in the future. Um, so keep an, eye us, keep an eye out for us out there on the slopes because we're out there every day. Um, and keep checking back to Chairlift Chat and our YouTube channel for more info.